Namaste. I'm with Francois Guatier, a dear friend and fellow traveler. You've seen him on my channel multiple times. He needs no introduction. Welcome. Thank you, sir. So, uh, why don't you start with, uh, because everybody knows both of us, why don't you start with what's on your mind, what you think the important issues are today, and then we get started. So I'm a lover and defender of Hindus. You know, when I came to India at a very young age, I felt that there was a knowledge, there was something extraordinary alive in India. Well, right from the first moment I stepped into India, I felt there was a knowledge and there was something very precious there, you know, which, which used to be there in the whole world, but disappeared today from the whole world. There are civilizations like Greece and Egypt and Mesopotamia who had this knowledge in certain form, but they lost it today. This knowledge has been under attack for a long, long time, you know, long time, from the invasion of Alexander the Great to the Muslim invasions. Today it is under renewal attack. Not the Great. <laughs> yeah, it's called the Great. Actually, I've written, you know, I mean, we don't a say, new book. You see, I, we don't say Hitler the Great just because he won battles. Right. I think that's a, that's a, that's a, <laughs> a no, bias. No, you're right, you're right. But uh, I have written a whole chapter on Alexander, actually, I, how he was not that victorious in India as he's been yeah. portrayed. And even if he was a military victory, it does not make you great. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So anyway, India suffered a lot and the and Hindus today are still under attack from all kinds of people, from the Marxists, from the Christian missionaries, from you know, Islamism, from westernization, from the Congress. So, I'm a lover and defender of these Hindus, and, uh, and they have great qualities, but Hindus are educated generally, they put so much emphasis on education. They are well off, wherever Hindus have gone, you know, they have done well. I can make it, they're great. What they lack is, you know, the spirit of, of warriors, you know, that what you, you have incarnated, you know, the Infinity Foundation has incarnated in the last 20 years, fighting for Hindus with action. You know, not only talking, and these conferences are great, you know, but Hindus need to go in action and in a tough manner. Mm. You know? It is not that, you know, we love everybody and okay, I slap you and no, they have to fight today and they are not fighting, mm. you know. Now, let's discuss this, uh, the absence of the fighting spirit. Uh, people give all kind of excuses. What, what is your, what is your uh, explanation? So my explanation is that there is a lack of a collective identity. Uh, there is a sense that if I'm doing okay personally and in my house and when I do puja nobody is bothering me so things are okay. Why should I worry? It's okay for me. Right. I have a nice house and a car and I'm doing very well and nobody is uh, going to trouble me. So if the people with power, with wealth, with resources, with influence are just looking out for themselves then who's going to look out for all the poor people whose identity is under is being trampled? So that's a, the, I, I see there is a certain selfishness. Uh, I also see there's a confusion that Vedanta has brought, the, uh, you know, it misinterpreted Vedanta. Uh, the, Buddhist, the Buddhist influence on the Vedanta? Well, a lot of Vedantins today feel that Vedanta means that, you know, you, you, why should you bother with this? It's all Mithya anyway, and it's all Maya anyway, and you just look positively and all that. So. Vedant needs to be reconciled with the Kurukshetra. Right. That is, you know, you, I agree. you are not a knowledgeable Vedantin. You know certain amount, you, maybe you know uh, chapter one or lesson one, level one you know, when you know the Adhyatmic side and the non-dualism right. as an ultimate reality. But then after realizing that, Sri Krishna says you got to go and fight in the battlefield. So the Vedant, Vedant in action as the Mahabharat, is the combination that is needed. Correct. And that is why we, we are so interested in make, creating intellectual Kshatriyas. Yes. Uh, what do you think of that, our, our whole project? Because I'm always attacked that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, why are you creating a controversy or why are you divisive? Uh, what do you think of that? No, being attacked is a good sign. It's a sign you're on the right track, I would say. I'm also being attacked a lot, so not only by, you know, my countrymen, uh, but also there is a Le Monde correspondent you know, at the moment in India with a very, you know, very nasty gentleman. And when I brought out my book on Indian history in Paris last year, he attacked me very vehemently in the page of Le Monde, which of course is a very prestigious paper. Right? It's signed we're on the right track. I would say more than intellectual kshatrism, you know, the Hindus need today to be physically able to fight if necessary. You know, in, in the spirit of the, of the Gita, 
they, they should be able to go down the street, you know, and stand up to their enemies, which, which they don't, you know. So don't. there's a certain, uh, a lot of people support me privately and are very happy I'm doing it, but they don't want to come and join me publicly. Mm. Uh, worst of all are people who will sit on the fence until I'm, I'm, uh, the tide has turned in my favor, then they'll come and support me. What they've like done there is, is fantastic. It's, you know, it'll, you'll be rec you already recognized for that, you know, but you'll be more recognized for that because you are a pioneer. You know, like like, like uh, my mentor uh, uh, Sitaram Goel in, you know, in, in India, you know, now everybody on the social media speaks about nationalism, but he was the first one, I don't know, you, you met Sitaram yes, Goel. Yes, yes, yes. 30 years ago, he was the first one to you know, say the truth, you know, and in a militant and, you know, but my, compromising my, way. My problem is like, for instance, uh, the, the, a certain group called, uh, you know, uh, Sabrang in New York uh, issued a press release uh, condemning this World Hindu Congress. So many of the people organizing it did not stand up and defend it. They just uh, either passed the buck to each other or they came up with this idea, you don't need to defend it. Meanwhile, people are leaving. People, people were canceling. Uh, yeah. Tulsi Gabbard canceled. Many other Ooh. people, oh, Tulsi, she, canceled she, 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 she canceled. And she wrote a very nasty letter that this is biased or this is parochial and she doesn't want to have anything to do with That's it. So you see, the organizers didn't stand up and speak uh, their mind. Yes. I did it. And they are appreciative because, you know, I, I did the right thing. Mm. However, people who didn't initiate, uh, you know, a counter voice against these uh, leftists, uh, after I turned the tide, uh, now they put out a press release as if they have done all this work. So there is this kind of a tendency among our people. One of the reasons they don't fight is they feel somebody else will do the fighting and will claim the credit. This is very sad. Minimum investment yeah. and then claim the credit of somebody's work. Yeah. But sometimes uh, people who behave that way, they suck the energy out because by claiming that they're already doing it, the energy doesn't, the people who have resources and want to help, uh, help the wrong people yeah. because they don't know where the energy is needed, where the resources are needed. Resources are needed where people are sticking their neck out where they're willing to take risk, where they're pioneers, not where people after the fact come issue press releases and take a bunch of credit and want, want to be commended for that. So, you know, you have certain people who are really working hard and certain people who are just sort of recycling the same knowledge, cut and paste here and there, mm -hmm. and they're going around and becoming very important. This is, I think, a problem with the Hindu movement. So, so, so my question to you would be how to awake among the Hindus today, this intellectual Kshatriyanism, how, how to awake it? So I think one of the important qualities required is that, you know, if you are, if you're just on a keyboard cutting, pasting and tweeting here and there, uh, that's not, uh, you, don't, you don't qualify. You have to physically go and confront opponents. Right. Uh, you have to have the f emotional and psychological courage that you'll be standing there, you'll be outnumbered, they will call you names, they will make allegations, they, they'll really make fun of you. And uh, some of your friends and family will say, why are you doing this? You are, you are making, you're spoiling our reputation because you're a member of the family and a member of our community. You have to put up with all that. You have to put up with all the slander and smearing and mudslinging that you will be subject to. If you cannot do that, don't call yourself a leader. So I think we need to have some qual minimum qualifications to be an intellectual Kshatriya leader. Yes. And one of the qualifications is that it's like a military general cannot say that I'll just sit in the VIP lounge and talk about the war, but I'll never go out there and lead from the front. You have to lead from the front. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so this is a, I mean, you lived in India for a long time and you've very accurately diagnosed this quality or this weakness that Hindus have. What do you think should be done about it? Well, first, I, I, I would say a few words about the cause of this weakness. I, for yeah. me, Buddhism, I mean, the perversion of the teaching of Buddha and uh, people like Ashoka the Great, you know, actually he was a very cruel man. If you look at Ashoka the Great's history, he was a very cruel man. He was man. also not great. Yeah, and his conversion <laughs> also was more political than, than, than real. And then, of course, Mahatma Gandhi, you know, Mahatma Gandhi has played a great role in the weakening of the Hindu psyche. Um, it's a fact today that 99% of Hindus are cowards, maybe a strong word, but I think yeah, they used they're, it. They're cowards. Cowards. used it. I mean, <laughs> Ramakrishna Mission doesn't have another Vivekananda. Ever since Vivekananda left, there's no tough guy like that. 
Yeah. And uh, uh, Chinmaya Mission, I mean, I, I, you know, I was raised by Swami Chinmayananda and learned a lot of Gita and I loved that organization. I loved Ramakrishna Mission organization. But Chinmayananda also, after Swami Chinmayananda left, uh, the, for several decades of Swami Tejumayanand saw a retreat as far as being the intellectual Kshatriya that Swami Chinmayanand was. So, you know, the, we are taking half the message. We are taking the message of the inner part of the journey, Adhyatmic part of the journey, mm -hmm. and not the message that you have to go into the Kurukshetra. Mm -hmm. So, this is a half Vedant, and I think that's kind of misleading. And so, what to do? So, this is the challenge. I mean, this is the, you, you, uh, uh, what, what I am doing from my side is we are trying to create as many intellectual Kshatriyas as we can. We are successful. We need people to come forth and help us. And the work we are doing is, you know, we are producing books authored by other people, not me, other young scholars, where they are required to name names, go after people, face the opposition that will come. So, for instance, we have several volumes. Some of these volumes are written by me and some of them are written by uh, people we call Swadeshi Indologists. So, Swadeshi mm -hmm. Indologists are young people we are training. Their job is to, uh, uh, you know, uh, critique a well-known famous colonial, you know, scholar or Western Indologist who is living. So, he will hit back. You can't, it's not enough to uh, criticize Max Miller because he's never going to argue back. He's dead. Right. Okay, you have to criticize a living person and a person of substance, powerful person. And if he's wrong and you know about it, you've done your research, you've got to go after that person. And this, you know, you have to pioneer. So, for instance, we have Audrey Tushke. She, right. need, she needs to, so if you are an intellectual Kshatriya, you want to do pioneering work, go after her. Write a good book, not a 10-page blog, but write a solid book critiquing her whole thing. Nobody has written a critical analysis of Ramila Thapar. I mean, I'm talking about a book. She's now very much present because yeah. she's uh, challenging the, the Indian government on the arrest of the Naxals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, I'm saying take the icons, either senior ones like Romila Thapar or junior ones like Audrey Truske, and have the courage, work hard, and publish, print a book, not just give a talk somewhere. And if you can, if you can do that, I respect you. That's the kind of people we want. Right. Can I go even further? Yeah. Because I'm a Frenchman and uh, yeah. I'm not a Hindu and I have a militant nature. You know, I gave a few talks to the RSS, HSS here and they asked, me, they asked me what can we do and there were a lot of youngsters there. I said there should be a secret army of youngsters, Hindu youngsters, you know, whom you make swear on the Bhagavad Gita and in a non-violent manner but nevertheless are warriors, you know, like, you know, People can, like Witzel can be compromised, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a beautiful young Hindu girl, they, they can compromise Mr. <laughs> Witzel, you know. Young men, you know, can confront in the streets, you know, very, people who are very hostile to Hindus without violence, just confronting, you know. People, these people are not courageous, you know. All these people like Christophe Jaffrello in front, not, but they never challenge. They never challenge, you know. You sit in front of their house, you know, when they write some rubbish article in the press. You know. So physical action. If you give them bad reputation if you make them look notorious you know they are so afraid of bad reputation they are so afraid of controversy so one thing you can do non-violent is as an intellectual kshatriya do enough hard work and make the opponent opposing sides icons controversial absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. i agree with you so, so that's one that you need warriors you need yes. people youngsters dedicated and yes. there are many hindu youngsters you know, yes. and you have to recruit them and Form them and you know and make them swear and you good, know. I think wonderful. Could be, we could do that. So that's an idea from a Frenchman from the French Revolution background uh, who wants to create an intellectual Kshatriya revolution. But non-violent. Doesn't non -violent. have to be violent. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. but action, physical action, confront people. You yes. Know, because confront people. Confrontation is a is a good thing. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, you, because they refuse to dialogue. Yeah, it is. All the Jaffre and the people, they refuse to dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to, you have to go and confront these people who are living in the high, high up in the clouds. Oh. So wonderful to talk to you. Same here. And uh, we'll keep in touch. And, and I'm. And you've done great work huh, for the Hindus. You've done great. I hope, you know, that they're grateful to you because you've done great work. You know, when I'm attacked, I often find nobody comes to my defense. Uh, when somebody else is attacked, I come running to their defense. 
So there is a lot that uh, uh, people can do for me. If you like these episodes, you can subscribe, get other people to subscribe because we have a lot of work to do. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here and also hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified. To donate, please click this button.